Hey guys, what's cracking? Godsman here, coming at you with the next installment of Custom Card Review. We're on to episode 8. Uh, yeah, it feels like time kind of flew. Uh, unless, uh, unless for some of you guys, the, uh, the anticipation has made time flow more slowly. In which case, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to go at this as fast as I can. Got some other content here and there to, uh, sprinkle in in between. So it's not just going to be a straight shot through all the customs. But I'm still trying to keep up a pretty even tempo with it, if you will so uh, let's go ahead and get a few of these out today i'm really excited to see what we got after uh some of the bangers from last time around the kevin stuff is really cool the fender stuff is really nice the medical combatants could use some balancing but in terms of creativity they were one of the best of the series so far uh aggressive pin 8202 let's see what we got here might as well throw in my cac's in the ring also the really long because it's one pick for comments so great epic Manga cards. There's a lot of interesting cards in the Vanguard manga that I wish were real, but they weren't, and I threw them into potential cards. So Alright, cool. So we're going to get some manga ride lines then. That's sweet. Uh, ride line, Men in the Shadow, uh, Grade Zero. That's uh, that's a pretty stranger danger name, if I do say so. My Unionverse. Hmm. Tis an unfamiliar term, I do say. Mask Wolf. Okay, so this is grade one of the right line. Uh, out on the Vanguard Circle in this unit is Rode Upon uh, by a Union first. Uh, if it's a Rode Upon skill, then you don't need to put Vanguard Circle. It would just say auto in this unit is Rode Upon. Just minor grammatical thing. Uh, reveal the top two cards of your deck. Put any nothingness cards. <laughs> Me. It's, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Suo does approve of this. Among them to the hand and put the rest in your soul. Okay, so... This is a potential plus two, but it's contingent on what you hit off the top two. Otherwise, it's just cards to the soul, which in that case is either... Uh, there's th one of three possibilities here. There, possibility one is you get two into the soul and nothing to the hand. One to the soul and one to the hand and uh, two to the hand. Two to the hand is likely optimal, but considering that you do need some soul, uh, you could also be totally fine with a one for one to the soul and then to the hand. Uh, two to the soul might be a low roll though, so we'll see how many nothingness cards there are. Transformation of Selfishness, Highgate. So this is our grade two. Vampire, this was a war beast, and this is a demon. Okay, so we're going for the Dark Zone best hits for uh, races. Auto on the Vanguard Circle once per turn when this unit is attacked. Ooh, if it's the first battle of that turn, cost reveal a card with unluck in its card name from your ride deck. Okay, so that would be your grade three. Choose one of your Vanguards and it cannot be hit until end of that battle. No, yes, this is what he does in the manga. That's so crazy though. Okay, okay. Um, This is fascinating. I love this skill and here's why. See... With most ride line type effects, right, your grade two is going to either break even or in the modern paradigm, it's going to be a plus one, right? Just know a lot of the Divines decks that we got, they're plus ones. Uber is uh, neg for a plus two, which is ultimately a plus one. Rezael gets a plus one. You get a plus one of Argus Dragress, so on and so forth. These are all pluses. This is also a plus, but in a very fun way, where in instead of having to guard with a card from the hand to guard against the opponent you can instead use this as a freebie guard which spares the need to guard with a card from hand thus saving you one card aka a plus one in the most roundabout defensive way possible that is fascinating and also that is really 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 funny because if he this name it makes sense now right it's selfish instead of giving you a card he instead is going to have the plus be in the form of protecting himself from getting hurt very selfish behavior uh cool card all right uh grade three let's see so this is we are definitely gonna click up there yay it loaded up immediately i love speedy internet Okay, Dark Zone uh, slash Dark States, uh, Grade 3 Twin, Drive Persona Ride, Union Verse, all that good stuff. He appears to be a demon, so we're back to the demon chicanery, just like the Great Zero was. Uh, Auto on the Vanguard Circle in this unit, attacks are placed on Vanguard Circle, cost Counter Blast 1. Search your deck, soul, or drop up to 1 nothingness card. I'm going to assume these are orders, but what kind of order is up to debate. Put it in your hand, uh, search the deck, shuffle the deck, okay? If this ability is activated during the ride phase, Counter Charge 1. 
Interesting. This isn't once per turn, meaning that you can effectively tutor two nothingness cards uh, on your grade three turn, and subsequently another nothingness cards when it's attacking, unless you persona ride, in which case it's going to be a plus two every turn. But we don't know the value of the nothingness cards yet. We just know that they're pretty important to the strategy and your cards tutor them to your hand. Uh, also, because it's a counter charge one the first time around for the win place, that's a very, very powerful win place. And I'm not gonna say that it's too powerful because because there are some vanguards which have genuinely almost busted on play skills that are totally serviceable because having to see that persona ride isn't always a guarantee i mean look at gravidia right gravidia would effectively pot of greed every time that you wrote it but you would then have to ride it and as any gravidia player will tell you when you don't see that persona ride it feels like you just hit the brakes on your deck that turn now, second skill is Odd on the Vanguard Circle. When your opponent's drive check or damage check reveals a trigger unit and your Vanguard has one or more critical, hmm, decrease this unit's critical by one until end of turn and the trigger effects revealed for that drive check or damage check are nullified. Uh, interesting. So, oh, this is, this is multifaceted. Oh, this is a fascinating card effect. So let's let's break it down into two paths, right? We have the your turn for this effect and the opponent's turn. During the opponent's turn, this is a very wild effect because you're critical as your vanguard. It doesn't matter. You're never going to hit your opponent unless you're that counterattack, surely, Nick. Uh, you're not going to hit your vanguard. Uh, with with your vanguard to the opponent so you don't need that critical so in other words it is a free trigger nullification from their drives uh the trigger effects let's see you nullify both the power increase and the trigger effect okay i was wondering about that this is wild um oh man for no cost other than just reduce the critical holy crap this would be such a shutdown strategy then i mean imagine drive Imagine drive checking the over trigger and this just shuts that down for free. And be oh, and because you're nullifying the trigger effects. Ooh, yeah, that doesn't get you anything. That that's crazy. Okay. Uh can then let's talk about your turn. Because your turn I, I think the end of the opponent's turn, this is a bit of like a Wild West card. It's just unhinged. During your turn, this feels a little bit more fair, right? Because when they hit a damage check, you're able to reduce its critical. Now, there's two ways of looking at this, right? One is they hit a damage check and your Vanguard has like did the hit, it did the strike first, meaning that when you reduce the critical, it doesn't matter because you've already done your damage. But, oh yeah, and also they, they take, oh, what are the rules on this, right? Let's say that you swing with unluck first. You hit a critical, and it goes up to critical two, and you hit your opponent. And your opponent's first damage check is a trigger unit. Does that mean that if unluck reduces his self down to critical one, that they only take that one damage and don't have to take the second? What's the timing here? Can someone explain this to me? Because I'm not sure how that timing goes. But assuming that they still have to take both damage, this is a very, very wild card effect. Um, I feel like it probably needed to counter or soul blast or do something personally. But if that's just what it did in the manga, well, then so be it. But manga effects tend to be a little bit more fast and loose because they're not intended for the IRL game card design. Uh, they're more thematic in nature where you can do some very crazy effects. But generally speaking, the opponent also has a very wicked or hyper specific strategy to counter that. That's the way manga battles tend to go from my understanding. Uh, mm, yeah, yeah, this is a this is a little bit egregious. Uh, continues to the Vanguard Circle. If your soul has four or more cards, this unit gets 5k also during the opponent's turn. Uh, really cool. Uh, I, uh, yeah, five, 5k continuously. Here's the problem, though. I think this condition is too easy. I think if you built up to, I don't know, like 13, which is the unlucky number, hence, you know, unluck, that would be better because we need to have a very good excuse to uh, make MLB jealous of us. Mm, yeah okay so this needs to be 13 or more personally there could be some other condition to it i think this condition is too easy and this needs to have an additional cost if you're going to do it also i don't i feel like it shouldn't be it shouldn't be available to where you can do it during your turn and then also the opponent's turn it should be like if you did it during your turn you can't do it during their turn and then 
it refreshes at the start of your next turn because being able to shut down two of those is crazy when your critical also just comes back by one at the end of the turn uh yeah oh and also you can even let, let, let's let's say that you did hit a critical trigger and you put it on it right then you can shut down multiples that turn if you do other attacks and they get other trigger effects so they can't heal they can't defensive ot they can't get power-ups they can't get draw effects they can't do anything yeah that that's too fast and loose uh this effect is fine though i think this effect is pretty cool although we have to see the nothingness cards now um i'm not going to get a little bit too harsh in this card design because it's pretty apparent to me that this is based on what the manga does so this reflects more poorly on the manga than the person who's actually designing it to my understanding uh, that's the ability to nullify any trigger at the cost reducing is so critical it's a cool concept unexplored area as well i do imagine be more defensive as well as adding some blitz orders as well oh okay so the nothingness cards appear to be a uh, thing you've included all right also most of its support will have the number four and 13 popping up as unlike oh i get it right because four um yeah four four let's see uh each nissan you know yeah so uh one of the ways to say uh four is she which is like shini or death so that's why it's sometimes considered an unlucky, unlucky number i i get it i think we should go for the 13 instead make it a little bit more difficult to reach that because in dark states it's dummy easy to do that i mean like heck just riding up naturally you're gonna get three cards and soul just call a brainwash you're at four that's too easy also despite the deck's defensive nature considerable amount of resource mansion full effect in all conjunction with its absurd defenses uh does it i guess we're about to find out what the other things require i've no clue if it's a good balancing factor or not enough to maintain its defenses it does shut down ot gets removed from the game and your opponent draws yeah okay yeah so you just do that inherent part of the ot but not the actual additional effects or the power grand close void gravity so this is a great three blitz order nothingness okay uh pay this with energy blast four that is hefty all right and you have a union first vanguard perform one of the following effects based on the number of nothingness in your soul and order zone uh two or more choose one of your opponent's rear guards uh, and change that opponent that unit's power to zero until end of turn um four or more choose uh, okay so you only you only choose one of the following okay uh choose one of your opponent's vanguards and change it to critical zero until the end of the turn huh well if you're changing an opponent's rear guard to zero oh i get it because the two or more is a shutdown for rear guards and then the four or more is a shutdown for vanguard so if you're if the vanguard's the problem you need to wait until four or more but the rear guard's the problem and rear guards tend to not be quite as threatening depending on the deck strategy so okay unless you're like zorg and Adir or something because then your rear guards are everything for you uh ooh. okay okay it's energy blast four which means naturally you're going to be tapering off on it but i can totally see where you would still like play this every turn mm. So let's see. Let's say, let's say you uh, went up to you went up to grade three first, right? You'll be at six, and assuming you pay nothing except for void gravity, that means you're going to be at two when your turn starts up. So you'll be at five, then okay, and then you can pay this again, and then you'll go up to four. So assuming the lowest amount of energy possible, which is you went up to grade three first, you'll be able to afford this uh, for three consecutive turns um but you would have to not pay for anything else energy wise so it's like a one card guard that's pretty powerful dude uh but also you need to build up nothingness cards okay and this says order zone so huh that means you probably need a set order oh wait wait, wait no 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 i don't think they're gonna do set orders instead it's like you need to get one into the soul and then this thing being played into the order zone counts as the second right right okay and then you can build more nothingness cards to the soul okay so there's a build up to which means you're almost certainly not going to pop this out on turn three unless you get that proper setup all right uh union versus the nothingness road play the same union versus vanguard if your soul in order zone of total four or more nothingness cards at the start of both players turn your unlucky vanguard's critical becomes two no oh uh, this is a set order oh crap dude and you can play for free. Act in the order zone. Put two nothingness from drop soul or orders onto the bottom of your deck. Uh, counter charge and draw. No, no, because you could just recycle those blitz orders back for a free drawing counter charge. No, and the you see the critical of the unluck is crazy because it doesn't just do extra damage, but that means you can shut down their defensives. I'm like, bro, 
This is just outclassing Amina Garugio. Can I just say, like, Amina wishes it could do shutdowns the way that freaking Unluck does. Like, imagine a card that doesn't need to bind its specific triggers to shut down their specific triggers. Nah, you just do any trigger, including the OT, just because it's got criticals. Yeah, this this is completely cracked this takes the strategy overboard it gives you recursion counter charge which uh is really important because this thingamajig is counter blasting already it's your only source of counter blast so you're making counter blast easy uh and this critical has dual utility um and wait it's at the start of the both players turns which means that you can shut down two of their triggers with their drive checking no 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 bad card bad card i'm sorry no 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 uh, Executioner of Gaps Crack. Uh, <laughs> he's cracked, I hope. <laughs> Auto on the rear when this unit attacks. If you have a if you have a Vanguard with Unluck in his card name, perform the following according to the number of cards in your soul. All right, so this is a grade one rear that ramps. Four or more, this unit gets power plus 10,000 until end of turn. Uh, this is interesting because it's a uh, grade one that's attacking, so that means it's going to be an 18k attacker. All right, I can dig it. Uh, 13 or more, which is definitely something you gotta ramp up quite a bit i understand discard a card this unit gets critic critical plus one until end of battle so you're negging for a critical very understandable uh 22 or more huh reminds me of numerology 22 is an important number in, in numerology cost counter blast one until end of that battle this unit's attack will hit regardless of power while the sum of the grades in your opponent's guardian is is uh not four or greater defensive decks do need a way to actually win i wanted to reference another lucky number but it had an unrealistic number to get the effect or it was too easy uh let's see so this is just based on the number of cards your soul if you can okay so this is trippy right so effectively what you've done is you've put a quadruple battle door um, wait, no, no, no. It's uh, some of the grades. Okay, so it's sort of like a Discorda for Bastion, where they needed to have three grades or more in cumul in like total for it in order to guard. Otherwise, they'll just hit regardless. This is for four or more, so this is more powerful. But the condition is uh, more steep than Discorda is, where in addition to the counter blasts, you also got to get to 22 or more in soul, which I'm not seeing a lot of soul building in this deck right now. So that's perfectly fine. And even if you do get there, let's say you get the 10k in the crit, which is a neg one as well. Uh, this is still just an 18k attacker, 28 persona ride. If you hit a trigger that's like 38, that's not that much of a bother. I, I like realistically, like, yeah, you could add that. You could add that pretty, pretty quickly. Like maybe just throw, uh, I mean, it is annoying uh if the uh the some of the grades but what you can do then is because i'm not noticing some removal with this deck right now so you can intercept and if you have like a couple of grade twos in the front row that fulfills the condition already and then from there you can just throw any additional guards all right so uh yeah this is a very scary condition but i think the amount of setup required for it and the fact that it's not the most threatening uh rear guard attacker it, it spares it so you know what i will give you this uh this guy is cracked but not too cracked slit mouth pomade uh that's a funny name um if i remember correctly pomade is like hair product or something to have your hair shine uh this is a grade 2 10k power okay continuously the hand or soul this unit cannot be called during the battle phase um okay so you cannot uh, multi-attack with it whatsoever uh unless of course you have like a revival score or something but that would be more into premium shenanigans i suppose uh hell i guess technically in uh premium spikes you can just call from the deck and you know go buy that but premium spikes has so much going for it anyway so who cares get you this on the rear circle if your soul has 13 or more cards which i don't think spikes will ever achieve because you'll be soul blasting for important things uh this unit gets power plus 10,000 continuously okay so so it's a 20k all right when your vanguard attacks if your soul has 13 or more cards and your vanguard has two or less critical uh cb and stand this unit ah okay um yes it also works in chaos most of these restrictions are meant to make him usable in some dark states decks but not in most dark states decks dredge can use it but it's fine it's just rock record too yeah uh the uh dredge could use it but it, it's not going to get that many cards in soul because it's soul blasting five every turn fire can use it with the deck until the help it can get um plus cb is also kind of a sensitive topic for uh, five in the first place i uh hmm. i think you would play this in five though um realistically uh be <sighs> huh i do like his notes because he makes a point he, he he does make a very fantastic point um and 
I think with this, like, yeah, you can use it in Chaos, but you wouldn't do this in Chaos over Mikani because uh, Mikani is a free restandard that also has the ability to be tutored out and has search abilities related to it, like with Grade 1 Mikani and the uh, Order. So you wouldn't do it in that. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I think I, I kind of like this, but what I will say is this isn't uh, future-proofed. Because it's not future-proofed, Slit Mouth Palm Mage could end up getting abused by a future strategy that takes the more traditional dark or regular play style of putting a bunch into soul. And if they have a really aggressive play pattern and this is just a 20k swinger that goes twice and maybe they don't counterblast very much, yeah, this could get kind of crazy. Like, I could definitely see a scenario where this might see play in a theoretical uh, encounter Ammon deck. So, I don't know if I like this card design necessarily um one thing i do appreciate at least is this effect which restriction for me placed from the hand or soul also means that it can't get abused in barrel magnus which he didn't mention that but like that is important that it can't get abused in that particular deck despite the fact that barrel magnus is effectively on life support right now uh okay it's a risque card but it's fine I, it's it yeah it's fine it's fine it's fine you put conditions you put costs and you also kept in mind of what the current decks of the format can do it it's fine yeah i'll i'll, I'll i'm not going to gripe on it good card good card although it, it can become a problem in the future because it's not future proof but you know what i think he's yeah, you know, he, he's placed his bets there, so we can respect it. Now it's time for the Manga MC's deck. It was tricky to balance. Also, due to the card limit, I won't be putting the Great Zero of the Ride line because it's just more important cards to mention. I have four slots left. It's just a D starter, anyways. Totally fine and fair. Uh, thank you for being respective of that. It makes my life easier, and it also makes these go by at least to something above a turtle pace, right? I know everyone wants to get to their cards, so I don't want them to wait two months for it. <laughs> Star Torch at Hara, Grade 1 Ride line. Auto when this unit is wrote upon by yeah you see like he, he that was correct right um but then uh where is it where is it where is it this one is auto vc so you, you actually did it right this time um that's that's hilarious cool uh when it's wrote upon by star saber cannabis i wonder what that's going to be uh look at seven cards on the top of your deck choose up to one card with star and its card name put it in your hand show the deck the fact that it says card means that if there's a star orders you can utilize those as well act on the rear guard circle if you have a vanguard with star and its card name reduce your vanguard's critical by one and this unit gets power plus ten thousand a ton of huh so this is so is unluck like a rival character in the manga or something because it feels like these two decks are having a critical manipulation gimmick that they have in common that's interesting reduce the your vanguard's critical by one this unit gets power plus ten thousand until end of turn um i'm not quite sure how criticals are going to be ramped or granted in this strategy so i can't say for sure but right now i think that's a fascinating skill uh, Star Saber Cannabis is the grade two. Auto when it's unit wrote upon by Union Verse grade three. Okay, so they're also Union Verse, which means that they have a a, a type a, a type sharing. This is reminding me a lot of of Reigns, right? Because I think I know which manga this is from, where they're like riding on like hoverboards or something. And uh, just like Reigns, they also wrote on hoverboards, and they had uh, the Cyber type that was introduced for Yu-Gi-Oh Reigns. And for this one, it's Union Verse. Feels very similar. So when it's wrote upon by Universe Grade Three, which means it's not restricted to whatever your your star grade three is assuming it's a star uh soul blast other than this unit so the grade one or grade zero call it to rear circle uh oh i get it yeah because if you soul blast in the call it to rear anyway it's like what was the cost so it's effectively a soul blast two for a plus one and um this one was a free plus one off top seven uh yeah yeah that's totally fair that that is a very well designed ride line good stuff out on the rear circle uh, once per turn when your vanguard attacks if you have a vanguard with millionaire in its card name <laughs> why not star so is he like star millionaire blah 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 mr richie rich i don't know uh counter blast one reduce your vanguard's critical by one okay stand this unit gets power plus ten thousand until end of turn Wow, you, you see, like, this one, wow, this is also reducing their critical. So this might be, like, some B-series Grand Gallop kind of thing, right? Where the Millionaire is going to get a ton of criticals, and then these take away from it as a pseudo-resource, pseudo-condition uh, for their effects. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, that also means that if you don't play those effects, your Vanguard might get a ton of criticals, and it will be, like, hyper-lethal, like it's armor break. That's nice. So here's the grade three. All right, let's check you out. 
Superstar Millionaire. All right, let's see what Superstar does. Uh, he's he, he looks snazzy. I like these manga cards. Uh, so he's a Keter Sanctuary, a human, universe human, my, my favorite type, just because everyone thinks it's boring, but I don't know, a lot of the humans just tend to have really good effects. Don't underestimate us humans. Uh, auto on the Vanguard Circle, and this unit's placed on Vanguard Circle. The, search your deck for up to one Union versus the Star Road and put in your hand. That is an order. So this guy is also searching orders when he's placed on Vanguard Circle. The the duality between this and Unluck... Oh, 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 that's funny. The, the, the rival character, which I'm so certain is either a rival or a villain at this point. The rival is Unlucky, and he's the Millionaire, which means he's super lucky. I get it. Oh, that's so clever. Auto on the Vanguard Circle. And this unit attacks. And this unit's critical zero or less. Ah, okay, okay. Cost Energy Blast three. This unit gets power plus one million because he's a millionaire. Okay. Uh, your opponent cannot call Sentinels from hand to the Guardian Circle, and this attack does not deal damage even if it hits. <laughs> so it's just a. Oh, interesting. So, okay, okay. Let me let me read on, read on, because it's really important to read all this uh, apparently, because everything is leading to the next card text. Um, auto on the Vanguard Circle when this unit attack hits a greater, greater Vanguard. That makes sense. Okay, so you really want to hit for this effect. And this unit's power is the funny number. Uh, discard a card from hand. Deal damage to your opponent's Vanguard equal to this unit's critical. This ability may only deal damage if your opponent has four or less damage in their damage zone. If you deal two damage while your opponent has four damage, you only deal one damage. Uh, so when it hits, you discard and you deal equal to this unit's critical. But this unit's critical is zero or less. And that's important to note. You can go into negative criticals, apparently. Which means that even if you do get a critical trigger, it's just back at zero, which means you don't deal any damage. Is that the lucky thing? So you're effectively making it, you're turning into a situation where you will hit no matter what, but you're relying on triggers in order to actually push your damage. I gotta say, this is super flavorful, but whereas Unluck's aspect of the gimmick was like overpowered, this feels underpowered. Like imagine a Vanguard that needs to energy blast three and discard uh just to deal a damage sure it's a guaranteed hit but the thing is is that wait they but oh 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 there's a thing there's there's i i think i might have figured out the thingy um so the thingy is when it hits let's say you did get a critical and you went from zero to one that's going to deal damage. But on the win attack hits, you'll also discard a card and push them from four to five. And then this will push them to five to six. And since they can't guard one million and two can't do sentinels, they can't guard it, right? Um, unless they use like a pseudo sentinel like Liel Morta or something. They can't guard this. Which means that, oh, I get it. If you hit a critical while they're at four, you're guaranteed to win. Uh, well, or at least to get them to six damage. So you're relying on being lucky. You're, you, you, hit, you hit the one in a million chance or something. That's a fascinating card. And, oh, and can I just say you'll 100% be playing Eidos Far on this deck because you need those criticals, baby. Uh, that's fascinating. Okay, okay. Th this feels like... I don't think this is a very good card, but oh my god, is it hilarious. That's the funniest thing I've seen all day, dude, genuinely. Well, actually, no, it might be the second funniest thing I've seen all day. If you guys look at my post, there was a Dayusha Archite meme that I found on Reddit that that was the funniest thing I saw all day, but this came pretty close. It's pretty hard to balance a card that gains 1 million power and shuts down Sentinels when it has zero credits. Make It's the stride that did that, so it's not the base form. It just combine the two since it's for standard. Makes sense. Oh, okay, so uh, that's interesting. They had strides in this universe. My angle of tackling is to give the deck its iconic skill, but you're not going to be able to deal damage with the attack. Only deal with the third ability at the discard. You can only push your point to five. You rely on your rear guards to finish the job. Oh, yeah, that's true, because also even if you do, like, hit and do, like, the discard, let, let's say they're at, like, three or something, then you go up to five. Afterwards, you have to just keep hitting, like, crits. Only deal damage. You have to rely on your rear guards to finish the job. What's also interesting is that this, um, this card, right? You could just opt to not do any effects and just swing with it, in which case it's just a basic beater. 
Um, but maybe the Union Road, Union Verse of the Star Road will like help with that idea. Uh, but that's something to bear in mind. You don't have to go for this gamble. Uh, but if you don't, then it's a vanilla. Therefore, you have to rely on your rear guards to fit. Okay. Uh, iconic skill. Uh, order it. Get... Oh, it's a she. Nice. Okay, cool. Honestly, hot. Uh, which is a denial Griffin esque skill where you check a critical, but I decided to make it work on both turns, made it cost more impactful. Okay, so I'm not fully understanding that, but let me read on just so I we can get to understanding that. Uh, Union versus the Star Rope. Grade three, Keter Sanctuary Union versus Set Order. Uh, cost of Soul Blast one. If your opponent's Vanguard is grade three or greater, your Vanguard's critical cannot go below zero. That's a very important maintenance thing. So, uh, uh, th see, this is fair. Not only does it have a cost associated with it, but you uh it, it's it's keeping you at just zero so you can keep on utilizing other skills without having to fear never dealing damage to your vanguard so it's sort of like an enabler set order which is fine some set orders being enablers make sense it's sort of like your field spell in uh Yu-Gi-Oh for reference although some field spells were more an accessory to the combo and others were super fundamental to the next core strategy Auto on the vang uh no <laughs> vanguard circle auto on the order zone once per turn when your vanguard millionaire and its card names critical is increased by trigger's effect cost discard a card from your hand and choosing your opponent's rear circle put all of the cards in the chosen right 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 this is the million uh, so this is the denial griffin right so if you check it defensively <laughs> I, I love this too i love this yes you have to discard a card for it which is fine that's good gameplay balance they're losing a card and you're losing a card this could be defensive or it could also be aggressive if you have a free fodder card to waste you can remove one of their cards even if they have resist because it targets the circle and not the unit itself and that is it's also to the bottom of the deck that's a cater sanctuary removal kind of thing they like the bot deck sort of like gear chronicle did um back in uh v and original series um yeah and during the opponent's turn as well right this i think this is one of the only times where i've seen a card actually incentivize you putting the critical effect somewhere on a defensive crit because as i said all the way up here was senior unluck your criticals doesn't matter during the opponent's turn it's sh rather it shouldn't matter uh it shouldn't matter in most cases this made it matter but in an oppressive way this made it matter in a gimmicky but super flavorful way where you uh because whereas unluck is absolute be you just choose you just choose your critical to go down right and be like no banned this one is relying on the top of the cards where you actually have to get the critical effect from a defensive trigger most likely this is amazing this is fun it's fun and funny which are the best combinations for a deck to have in my opinion my humble humble opinion okay okay so unlock is kind of a bust um there's some very unfair aspects with it and also i don't know how you build up a lot of soul uh i guess just to do a lot of generic dark state stuff so it feels like it's underdeveloped in some ways and it's overcooked in other ways so you know both ends of the spectrum there this is amazing though this is very well thought out it's it's super gimmicky and it feels like the theme too right like when you actually nail the cards you need to nail with millionaire you feel like that millionaire superstar you feel like the dude who just won the lottery it's sick dude it's so in theme i i want to play this i so want to play this okay so yeah bro honestly uh one for one in terms of like my ratings i would give unluck like a uh six out of ten um like the unluck cards but the millionaires are goddamn 10 out of 10 there is nothing i don't love about these cards uh, okay, duo bodybuilder. Ah, hey y'all, it's me, Logan. This. So for those of you guys who were around for the uh, last season of Custom Card Review, we got Slayer cards that me and Nabs reviewed. And now here comes the Slayer man him, uh, instead, and he's going to do some uh, interesting stuff here. So let's read on, because he's been he's been actually working on these for a while, from my understanding. He was DMing me some stuff, so... Mm. Take a quick sippy and read on because I'll do him the due diligence of reading these. The Slayers are the counters to Griffogila and the Dragon Tree archetype. It's what they slay. They slay the dragon. Neat. However, when I did them for the first time, let's just say they weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. I'm sorry, bro. 
Uh, ever since that video showing off my first custom cards, I've been working with Godsman on how to improve the OG Slayer cards. These were the DMs that I was talking about, as well as some new cards behind the scenes. Although I can't show all of them, and indeed, he made a lot. Uh, I can show off some of them here. Believe me, I have a hard time choosing the units. I also don't know what units you choose. He he made he cooked up uh, so many cards that I'm not sure which ones he's going to do. So there is going to be some uh, full soft. Uh, the disclosure here is I do know a lot of the cards that he made, so they're not going to be as surprising. So I will still explain the thought process behind some of these. And it'll be like a, a different sort of review, if you will, right? Uh, a few things. The art goes to their original owners and creators. Right, right, right. I have plenty more coming. Indeed. Sending all the customs on untapped when I'm fully set with them, not just the ones shown here. Uh, this is particularly helpful. Uh, if you guys want to play them, go ahead. I also will definitely want to be playing some of these, and it'll be helpful to not have to input them because that is a side note. When uh, when these custom when this custom card review reaches its conclusion, and I start doing some custom card battles, I'm going to have to be inputting a lot of custom cards into the system in order to actually play these on untapped so if anyone wants to help input some of these as well uh let me know and uh it, it would help out uh had to edit the comments to fully explain the card skills and even update them just in case there were any hours okay cool <clears throat> so let's see uh continue the thread yeah we're definitely have to continue the thread uh gotcha okay um show parent comment okay so that's what we're gonna have to do let's go ahead and start with this soul of the slayer look at the top seven cards of your deck choose up to one unit card with slayer or savior in its card name from among them reveal put your hand and shelf your deck okay uh so imagine if it's like mask of hydrogen but for slayers uh, act of the drop, you have a grade 3 Vanguard without Slayer in its card name. You reveal a grade 3 Slayer, write the revealed as stand. If you wrote, put this into soul. If it's grade 3 or greater, uh, the opponent's Vanguard is grade 3 or greater, and you did not Persona write this turn, you activate Persona write. Again, it's just like Mask of Hydricum. Uh The search radius, I believe, is a little bit higher, though. Uh, so, in, in a way, it's a objectively superior Mask of Hydricum. But I, Mask of Hydricum had a dedicated searchers, and I don't recall this getting dedicated searchers, so I think that's the trade-off there. Uh, still, I mean, I, there's nothing bad about this that I can say just by virtue of the fact that it is a Mask of Hydricum. Uh, okay. Note, new marker, uh, profit marker. It's the opposite of the Dragon Tree marker. Go figure. As long as it's in your, as long as it's your turn, you have a Vanguard's uh, Slayer or Savior or in the Soul. All the units on the circle occupied when these markers plus 5k. Okay. So yeah, just imagine like the same stipulation to Dragon Tree markers where you need a Dragon Tree or Mask. You need Savior or Slayer for these in order to get that 5k power up. But it does say in the Soul. So uh, this is also a little bit stronger, just like how Soul, uh, Soul to Slayer is a little bit stronger. Uh, new ability, Slayer's Oath. Slayer's Oath, as long as you have this Slayer unit in the Soul, your Vanguard has a similar name as this unit without Slayer or Mask and meet any other requirements, obtain the following abilities. So this is a little bit convoluted, but let's read this example here and then I can explain it. Uh, Nirvana Slayer Oath only works if you have that unit in the soul and either Nirvana, Mahar Nirvana, or Nirvana Java in the soul. Uh, it can't work if you have a card with mask in the soul or if you have a Vanguard with mask. So effectively, the Slayer's Oath is, a, is a skill if you have like a cross ride active. Uh, if you cross ride with one, for instance, with the Nirvanas, if you cross ride with one of the other Nirvanas, then you can have that additional effect. And that's one of the reasons why it's referencing a Slayer unit in the soul here uh, for this and also for this effect. That's the, I guess, the theme of it, right? They they carry on their energy and their essence to the other iterations of their respective Vanguard. It's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and check out some stuff. Uh, this is Planet Savior Knowing Kateria. When its unit is placed on rear circle, Cataplast 1, uh, put a profit marker. It's just like a Dragon Tree Wretch. When your opponent's rear guard is retired due to battle or a card effect, cost Soul Blast 1. This is a Dragon Empire grade 1, by the way. Uh, Soul Blast 1, choose up to one Dragon Empire unit uh, card from your drop zone at your hand. This one is, uh, this the one is so cracked, especially because. <laughs> Dragon Empire never went through a name change between the original series to the uh, standard format, so this can literally add any Dragon Empire. Uh, that one, it is a once per turn, but Soul Blasting to add any from the drops onto the hand, it's definitely a very, very, very strong effect. Like, this would be one of those things where uh, I can totally see this having just generic play in almost any Dragon Empire deck whatsoever, even without the use of the profit markers hmm now it's a it's a bit 
it's a bit over the board if you will uh, i could have just said overboard i guess whatever over the board we're gonna commit to it uh but at the same time i think it's also kind of an intriguing effect because there aren't a lot of ways to recur from drop to the hand in dragon empire specifically maybe there's some like ninja clan kind of stuff from murakumo or nubatama that could do it but generally speaking they don't do that very often to my understanding i guess tachikaze maybe now that i think about it but also it's based on your opponent's rear guard getting retired due to battle or card effect which more often than not leans more towards the kagero play style right and kagros don't do hardly any recurring to my understanding so yeah this this is a pretty intriguing uh, effect overall it's very powerful though like holy crap uh when it's placed uh on rear uh counter blast soul blast you get a profit marker and then search uh your deck for up to one uh order card with soul in its name um which is like a mask of hydrogen searcher but it seems like it has more uh, potential targets there i think there are like other orders but and talking with them, those orders were pretty cracked, not gonna lie. So we were still like figuring out the kinks on the balancing there. This uh this one is it, it it's like just a slightly power cut version of the grade two versions. It's the same cost, it still gets the marker and it searches the order, but there's another like it's a wider range on the order search. I don't think it's really offensive to just power creep those ever so slightly, because those weren't like the most powerful links ever in the first place. Um Draconic Overlord, the Blazing Slayer. Okay, so here comes the first iteration. Oh, I, I know which Draconic Overlord art that is. Uh, if I remember correctly, that's the victory. Um, this this is our first Slayer. So let's see what these are all about. Uh, full screen. This card can only be written from a grade three with, with Overlord and its card name. Just like the mask units. Continuous in the Soul Slayer's Oath. This name, this card's name is treated as Dragonic Overlord, and all of your front row Kagero get rear, uh, get uh, all of your front row Kagero rear circle get power and shield plus five thousand. So, yeah, that, that that's where the cross ride comes into play, right? Um, what's also trippy is uh, it can be treated as original Dragonic Overlord, which is important because if you ride into the end, then you can enable the. Uh, uh, the dragonic overlord cross ride bonus i suppose it's a cool effect right it, it feels like it takes into account the different overlords so that's pretty snazzy and the the power up is generally useful right you know you can get like a little bit more defensive power a little bit more attack power but nothing uh, nothing overboard and it's uh only online on turn four just because well turn three turn three if you went second turn four if you went first that's fine Auto on the Vanguard Circle, at the end of battle, this unit attack, counterblast one, and discard two cards from the hand. Stand all of your front row Kagero units, um, which is, yeah, the fact that it's Kagero units, uh, that's that's very balanced around the specific Kagero cards like Nehalem that we got for Overlord. In premium, this would be like pretty wild, but in premium, we have a lot of very, very strong uh, overlords. I mean, hell, think about uh, the turnabout. The turnabout is also a front row restand. Stand all of your front row Kagros. This unit gets drive minus one. If your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater, all of your front row get power plus 5,000. If you use this skill at the end of your turn, choose a card with overlord and without slayer and his card in for your soul and write it as rest. See, this is one of the beautiful parts, right? Uh, let's ignore that this name stipulation would get in the way of uh, it being treated as a slayer because i don't think it would get treated as a slayer uh because i think it would be original card name you have to put here but the design intent is splendid right where you do get the very big burst skill but then they go back to the original form so it's like the slayer's oath is empowering them with this upgraded super attack and then they nova they do the big move and then they regress back into their original state of dormancy. And what's also nice about this is that this means you get set up for Persona Rides on the subsequent turn if you keep reutilizing the uh, Soul of the Slayer Order card, the uh, Mask of Hydricum. It's a very cool skill. And, you know, it's just a little bit of 5Ks, but you're getting a restand, so you're getting to double dip them, a maximum of six attacks. You can uh, get cucked a bit by the, uh, you can get cucked a bit by field control, getting rid of your uh, Kagero pieces because they need to replenish those. Technically, it's a neg one because for discarding two, you only get back one drive, but it's a really big burst turn with the potential to Persona on turn three. Yeah, this is a really cool card. I think if you go second with this, you could definitely potentially OTK your opponent if you have all the right setup and the right tools. But then afterwards, 
you know, you're just doing some Bivash type stuff that is a little bit more vulnerable to scrutiny. Um, I like that. I think this is a really cool skill. It, it, it will definitely beat up your opponent really, really badly. Uh, but it is cool that it has a, that sort of, uh, what do I call it? Like a retaliatory type effect if you went second, which is what masks should feel like in a way. Well, mask and now these. Because that's the whole persona ride of the opponent's grade three thing. One last thing to note, I I do really love this this uh, this soul effect to help with Dragon Club at the end. That feels like a really smart card design decision. Okay, uh, moving on. <clears throat> so we've got uh, Apocalyptic Follower Neo Flame Evolute. Uh, that's one thing about this dude is even though I think even after like all the edits, the card design isn't necessarily perfect. Um, he has a lot of really good cards and he's way better than the last time we reviewed his cards one thing to know is his i love his names uh when this unit is placed on rear uh it doesn't matter where so it could be from the drop zone uh which is yay for premium the great soul blast one and choose a card with dragonic overlord in his card name from your hand reveal it choose one uh choose an opponent's rear guard in the same column retire it if the uh unit retired was on a dragon tree marker or had dragon tree or mask in its name choose the unit behind it and retire it as well if you couldn't retire it uh this unit gets power plus five thousand. so yeah this is interesting it's a uh it's a it requires some setup but if you maximize it with the power of uh it, it's funny because this is a dragon tree hate card but it's still a good card even without the dragon tree hate right and that's important because the last time we were reviewing these kind of cards it didn't feel appropriate because if either the hate was not worth it at all or the hate was the entire effect which means it was effectively a brick in the vast majority of matchups this is the this is the fine line where it's a good retire that gets even better against those matchups i like that as well that because you couldn't retire you get 5k it's like you still get some additional benefit even if they happen to be pesky about it. like let's say you're playing against a uh, keter dragon tree and you couldn't get rid of their facado it's like well i'll get 5k then fine uh can choose on the front row rear if you have a grade 3 vanguard but you're gonna go for his card name uh this unit gets power up plus 1k for each card in the opponent's damage zone if it has slayer it gets uh it gets 2k yeah so this uh effectively you can get 10k max if the opponents have five and you have a slayer but that's the maximum we can get as an attacker and it's fine that that's the maximum we can get you don't want to go too overboard because let's keep in mind this is a kagro unit so it's going to restand along with your slayer even if they're at like let's say four damage uh this is uh going to be an 18k beater that goes twice with persona it's 28 twice so 28 28 ban 28 28 van which is like 23 twice or something like that maybe it's 28 twice as well uh that's pretty that's pretty significant not gonna lie uh hey hold on a second did does this one also oh yeah i gave him like 5k so it's like 20 uh, it's like 33 33 uh yeah this is a very this is a very scary burst turn right um uh, but of course your opponent's vanguard has to be grade three or greater to get the persona right otherwise it's just like a lot of attacks uh maybe it doesn't come out in the wash and the attacks are so great that even if you go first you don't care necessarily you just go for it anyway because the the slayer uh the slayer's oath doesn't care if the opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater to get the ride so it might just be so objectively superior as an effect that you just say F it and do this. You'll rewrite anyway. Uh, well, yeah, you'll rewrite anyway to another Slayer. Keep in mind, you won't be able to get the 5k or the or the skill that goes back to the original Overlord if your opponent isn't Vanguard. Uh, if your opponent's Vanguard is in grade 3 or greater. I'm starting to not be able to speak English. Oh my god. Mm. What that all means is... It is still balanced, but quite scary. Uh, but yeah, like the more I look at this, I'm like, oh man, I really wouldn't want to fight against this though, right? Like it just feels like such a headache to fight against, unfortunately. Uh, Promised Flaming Follower Aramo Evolute. See what I mean? These these feel like actual card names. Uh, Auto on the rear. When this unit is placed on rear, if your Vanguard has Overlord in its card name, Carablast use a card from the drop that has Overlord in its name or text box and add it to your hand. So for a CB, you can recur a Kagro unit. Um, it it works part and parcel with uh, the Dragon Tree Wretch that we got for it. So it's just more recursion. It helps you fight against the uh, 
the field control matchups that will get rid of your cards it's a very powerful skill and if it was anything shy of a cb i would have said no but no nah, this 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 feels worth it Aramo feels like a staple uh auto on the back row rear uh when this unit boosts an over, uh, overlord unit uh which can be a rear guard mind you soul blast one the boosted unit gets 5k until end of that battle or 10k if it's a slayer uh yeah this this is cool because it's a until end of battle instead of an end of turn and this only activates when it's boosting that unit and it can't restand itself because you're only restanding the front row so you can only go once with it uh so whether you do it for the first I, I would recommend boost with arrow first make it really big and then rely on hitting triggers to still make your vanguard scale in power either way this is a perfectly fine card it's very strong of course and an absolute four of i believe but yeah it's it works and it also synergizes with the overall deck uh philosophy and I just really like this first skill for being able to help against control matchups <laughs> I, I i don't know i don't know how else to say it man that's a little bit of my bias uh okay what do we got um planet savior noble uh Neska. Uh, okay so this is a uh, keter sanctuary uh wretch so it's got the first skill which is just the cb get a profit marker second is auto on the back row rear once per turn when your rear guard is placed in the front row the same column as this unit uh okay so discard one card and take a keter sanctuary card from drop and add to your hand oh okay so this is a common theme again like d i feel like i'm just discovering these ones for the first time because it's either been so long since i've seen these or he just did these behind the scene but you're breaking even but you're swapping out a card from the hand for anything that's keter in the drop which is very very powerful and and in reality i would say that makes the dragon empire one look better because it's a raw plus one for a soul whereas this one's just to break even but there are a couple things to know about this which i do like it's very specific to uh you placing a to placing something in the front row in front of it so it's like a column specific thing which lines up because that's how the uh soul to Sakab worked where you would see it being dropped something was placed in its column uh this would definitely work splendidly with Dreziel, i'd uh, i'd imagine the discard is also cool because there's a card named wayward therapy angel and wayward therapy angel when it's discarded from hand during your turn assuming you have a great three greater vanguard you're able to soul blast one and call it rear guard in the back row so this can uh combo with that uh, hell it even has a battle phase combo if you can recall things during the battle phase like let's say with Rezio or something you can then call in front of this this skill will activate you discard take any card from the drop and add it to your hand which by the way can add a pg which is super powerful man like holy crap thinking about that even more i don't know if we should allow pgs to be uh recurrable like that because if you're not feel controlling against this that's kind of that's kind of busted not gonna lie uh, but it, let's just assume this says without Sentinel, right? Um, or hell, I guess you could also recur your OTs, couldn't you? <sighs> Maybe a normal unit without the Sentinel ability, just to keep it chill. Uh, yeah, anyway, so you discard one, which is the Wayward, and then mid-battle, it'll call itself to a back row. So maybe what you do is, let's say on, um... You're on like uh, five damage with Rezio. You swing, you CB, you call a three or a two, and then uh, not only will this see one of those to support it, probably the two, you can then call the Wayward that's discarded to behind three, and bada bing, bada boom, you've got optimal columns again for your multi attack. Uh, that's just one way of taking it though. Uh, yeah, I think this needs a couple limitations to it and uh in retrospect i i think this even despite like the uh the needing of limitations it still makes this look way better because i for i forgot about the idea that you can add a dragon empire pg and this one's actually a plus one so let's let's chill out on the genericness of what you can add back uh now looking at planet savior champion uh chested okay so yeah this is just the same thing as the dragon empire one cb soul blast get your soul and then also get a uh, profit marker. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's continue to thread though. So we've got four more cards to talk about, which uh, appears. To... Oh wait, hold on a second. It says continue to thread even more. Does he have more aside from that? No, no, no. He doesn't. Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. So he's got a uh, avatar of torrential shadows, phantom blaster slayer. Yeah. So we've got some. 
Just like with Dronic Overlord, Phantom Blaster is also going to be a Slayer, I guess. If people thought that we, when these things were announced as encounter sets, they thought they were going to slay the format with nostalgia. Uh, but nope, instead, they're going to be slaying Dragon Trees and all the villains of Kray. The first continuous skill is just like it is with all the other Mask and Slayer skills. You can only write it on top of a Grade 3 with Phantom in its card name, aka... Phantom Blaster Overlord or Phantom Blaster Dragon. Continuous in the Soul Slayer's Oath, your front row Shadow Paladin and Blaster on rear gains resist, your back row rear gain boost, intercept, and can intercept from the back row. <laughs> Is it just me or does this feel like this works better with MLB? Because MLB can get a boatload of great twos out there, so letting them intercept from the back row and having resist while doing so is pretty cracked. Uh, like in if this was like if this did, the thing about it is this is only for Shadow Paladin though, uh, and also Blaster, so you can't do it in like. I guess you could do it in Luar, technically. Yeah, never mind. Um, ignore what I said there. Uh, like, you could do it in an MLB deck. It wasn't the fact that you need MLB, so you wouldn't do it anyway. And you also need to ride um, on a grade through with Phantom, so I guess you can't ride over the MLB in the first place. So, yeah, never mind. It wouldn't work in MLB regardless because of the name restriction. I just thought it'd be kind of funny to intercept much of those uh, grade twos. Uh, but still, like, really cool effects. Um, I think that for a Shadow Paladin deck like uh, Phantom Blaster, which retires a lot of the rear guards inherently, this... This might not be the most powerful thing in the world, but at least giving them resist means that you're not going to lose any more than what you're forcing yourself to lose out on. Act on the Vanguard Circle, Soul Blast 2. If you have one or less rear circle, uh, that's weird. I, uh, I I think it means to say if you have one or less rear guards, um, because you will always have five rear circle, unless you're playing against a much more nutty custom card that has yet to be designed. Call up to three cards with Blaster in their abilities or card names from your soul or drop to open rear and they get 5k into the turn. Uh, this one's a little bit much because soul is not something that you utilize very much in uh, Phantom Blaster. Like you hardly soul blast it feels like. So being able to just plus three every turn just by a soul blast two and give him 5k ah it's a little bit much i think if it was soul blast two for one or hell even soul blast two for two i'd be fine with it um but it's just essentially recurring its own fodder every turn and what's crazy about this for a slayer deck is you can soul blast out your slayer's oath and that means your slayer's oath can then go back in the soul and superior ride into another phantom blaster slayer and that's recurring one of your soul pieces every single turn so that's too cracked unfortunately uh auto on the vanguard circle at the end of the battle this unit attacked retire two of your rear guards choose up to one card named phantom blaster overlord from your soul and write it as stan okay so it's a superior ride which uh thankfully this doesn't count as a phantom blaster overlord in name so you can't persona ride not that you could anyway because persona ride is only during the ride phase normally you would have to have an effect that specifically states that you persona ride otherwise that's an important ruling to know about persona rides a lot of people ask me about that uh, until end of turn, this unit, uh, that unit can't activate its auto abilities and gets 10,000 power minus, uh, drive minus one. Okay, cool. So they paid attention to the fact that, uh, you can get even more multi-attack with the Phantom Blaster Overlord by calling a Blaster Dark back from Dropper Soul. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, I think this plus is, like, way too good, but this effect makes sense. You're getting rid of two cards in order to get a plus one and an attack, which is which is more or less the conversion that you would expect that makes perfect sense and uh this still works with your uh blaster dark and promo combo because what you do is you just call back the blaster dark and also the promo from the drop zone you retire for this effect to the superior ride and then from there you're able to uh have her effect proc when she's retired by the ability and get the blaster dark that you also revived off the axe skill the effect to start doing drive checks so it synergizes with the deck's current game plan so honestly yeah most of this is really really well designed the only thing that i wish was different was you making this axe skill uh chill out a bit right like i don't think you should be calling three unless you have a way more wicked cost i mean that's way too easy a stability piece that makes this effectively free right like uh, effect like effectively free in the sense that you can uh soul blast one uh your soul blast two 
for a plus three but then you're negging one which is therefore a plus two but with an extra very dangerous attack right let's keep in mind that ppo if you're putting a phantom blaster dragon into soul it's going to have an extra critical at all times yeah make this plus less please and then we're good uh but still overall pretty cool card let's see next up we've got hey we've got a uh, cormac and mac card that's funny dude okay so uh my man decided to go for one of the lesser known revengers which i can appreciate okay so for those of you who don't know cormac was a legion uh he was the other revenger legion from the legion era because everyone was so focused on phantom blaster abyss they forgot that cormac was also a pretty decent legion all things considered let's see how my boy did it with this time around okay twin drive from sunride all the same stuff auto in the rear circle when this unit attacks a vanguard choose one of your rear guards to retire it choose a unit on rear circle with a different uh okay with a different blaster name but you see he acknowledges to put unit on rear circle instead of just saying rear circle uh it makes the uh the earlier error a little bit baffling i guess it's just an oversight with a different blaster name and gets critical plus one okay and auto on the rear at the end of the battle that this unit attacked this unit must be sent back to its owner's hand you must push it back you must be like v aglavale otherwise i will disown you my son <laughs> oh my that is a really funny wording uh auto on the rear when this unit attacks a vanguard if you have another blaster unit the same column as unit this unit gets 3k until end of that battle uh okay cool uh that means it's a 16 a 16 boosted by an 8 is a 24 total which is a magic number theoretically all right that's cool. Uh, and it also is flavorful because a lot of your break ride and Legion era vanguards also got very minor power buffs when they attack so they could hit over cross ride numbers and also hit optimal numbers when it's supported by a unit. And this one is maintaining that flavor. So that's a very 10 out of 10 uh, reimagining of those minor skills from the time. This skill uh, is just like an easy retire uh for a critical and also it, it it also means that you can get a plus one back to the hand technically for that easy retire but yeah th this is more or less what cormac did in the legion era so this is a 10 out of 10 card i think it feels perfectly and meaningful to what you would do i i guess the one thing that's a little sad about this card is it's not a revenger it just says revenge and it's a blaster instead which i mean if you guys know that uh that blaster guy right zekrog vanguard potential he has he goes by ma many names he'd probably design a card like this because that man that man is deep in love with blasters uh so okay i i am a little sad as a guy who loves revengers the most in the shadow paladin clan but i can accept it because you just want this to help one aspect and not the other so all right you know fair play i'll give it to you uh okay so moving on from cormac we're going to go on to his legion mate mac Hart. okay so mac Hart has two auto skills it appears auto on the rear when this unit is placed on rear counter blast one and discard one card okay cool uh i'm going to assume from the hand even though it doesn't specify it's almost certainly from the hand choose up to one great two or less card with blaster and his card name for your drop and add it to your hand okay cool so yeah you just cb in order to swap cards fair enough uh cool and then its second skill is auto on the rear when this unit attacks or boosts a unit uh boost why would it boost is it going to gain an ability to boost that i'm not aware of in this strategy huh weird uh let me check something about uh cormac real quick cormac was uh, both vanguard circles uh, wait no he's a rear guard circle oh so it's going to get boost from your slay oh so this is still slayer support okay so okay guys here's here's the deal this is your main vanguard right it's going to give your shadow paladin and blasters boost and intercept and all that goodness right so what you do is when this guy attacks you choose one of your rear guards and retire it uh so this is an alternate to needing the whole blaster dark drive check thing so you choose a uh, another rear in to get the extra critical and uh, since it's a different blaster that means it can't be itself so you'd have to put it on the other rear guard circle and that then oh this is trippy right so how would your attack patterns go let's say that you uh, have a full field 
you would swing with this guy with support. No, you wouldn't swing with him first necessarily because this guy would uh, retire something that's standing. You don't want to do that. So you would want to go for a column, which I guess the column would be like, let's say it was just a column. You go for your Vanguard with a Slayer and then it does the superior ride, but that means you can't call back the blaster, right? So you're retiring two for the superior ride. So you're down to three uh let's say that you had a booster for this guy this retire this will retire the booster that's already been utilized in order to get a blaster is something different but it's on rear circle and it can't be him so and it has to attack a vanguard but that column is wiped so hold on a second how does this work then like, you don't have enough rear guards unless you're superior calling during the battle phase, which you're not doing that because you can't give Phantom Blaster Overlord skill. This works with regular Phantom Blaster Overlord quite splendidly, but with the Slayer one, I don't think you can have an optimal attack pattern that utilizes both the Slayer and Cormac. That's really unfortunate. Weird, man. Uh, but at least I understand why this says it can boost now. When it attacks or boost, if you have a unit with Blaster in its card, and it gets 5k until end of that battle. Perfectly serviceable. Uh, moving on. Um, overall, yeah, pretty cool card. Uh, C being for a break even, it's uh, severe, but at the same time, like this one, break evens with a lot of different options, which to me makes more sense than the break evens you got earlier on, which uh, were way less costly, right? Like, imagine a card like this, which CBs and can't get back those PGs. Or, uh, or hell, I can't even get back those triggers in this format, right? Whereas the other one, it doesn't CB, it discards for a, a similarly easy condition, and it can get back anything. I think that's the discrepancy in your card design right now. Uh, let's go for Dark Beast, Paladin, Follower, Blaster, Spinbow. Hey, my boy Spinbow finally getting some attention. This guy's been around since ages ago, but ain't no one remembering Spinbow. No one talk about Spinbow. <sighs> Uh, continuance on the rear circle when this unit would be retired for the cost of the ability of your Vanguard with Blaster on his card name, but retired as retired to regards. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, I, I, I guess, okay, okay, okay. If this reto- That's how you do it. So, that's how you do it, right? What you do is you have a spin bow. Spin bow gets retired, uh, for the entire cost of your Overlord Slayer. It rewrites, and then that means you still spared your two front rows and, like, the back rows. So then you use Cormac, you retire the back row center, and you give critical to the remaining front row on the other side. It means that you won't be utilizing as this guy's a booster, which is unfortunate. This uh, auto... Yeah, when this unit boosts, if you have a blaster in the same column, it gets 5k until end of that battle, which means it's effectively 11k booster. An 11k booster is a 24k, which is a lot like what Cormac is bringing to the table. Uh, Cormac is actually a... 25 uh 30 in conjunction with mac heart so 30 is a, that's a pretty good number as well right it's demanding 20k shield uh this is a really good number and it could be good retire fodder but again if you're utilizing both cormac and overlord slayer you this isn't going to come into play so there's some dissynergy there which i don't like you could consider it balancing of course i i don't think it's too devastating necessarily i just i just have to point out that like it doesn't it doesn't read as decision trees that differ it reads as cards that don't completely work with each other uh which i don't like that in the card design but maybe that's just me being a super biased shadow paladin nerd but still um i gotta say i think uh mac card is really well designed and cormac is a cool option that works with some versions of blasters and i think this is perfectly designed uh this one's a this one's a little bit the problem child because of the axe skill and i also like spin bow spin bow is a really strong booster that also counts as two so this would probably see play play in blasters because it's a super convenient um unit that effectively turns your neg one into break even <clears throat> uh well over discounting the other plusing effects of the deck which is the reason why shadow paladins have one of the best fundamental structures of any clan in the game and why it's so frequently competitively viable yada yada right <laughs> uh overall yeah pretty cool cards uh, i like these i think i uh, i don't know if i like these better than your overlords um i think they're more balanced than your overlords are because you're uh, this won't be smashing the opponent to kingdom come the same way that overlord will thankfully uh so it's more even keeled but at the same time there's some inherent disenergies that i don't see from from your overlord card so that's where uh they pull out ahead uh they're they're about equal overall for me but i think i'm gonna get the slight edge to your shadow paladins your overlords i'm gonna rate a 
8 out of 10 and your shadow paladins i think i'm gonna rate an 8.25 out of 10 so just marginally better but mm, it's, a, it's a bit back and forth uh okay so let's go ahead and go back to all the comments here uh sort by old nope that's how i do it guys i'm sorting by the old so if you uh if you want to continue making additions it will just come like near the bottom of the list but you will still be included so if you got any customs coming uh come and share them because we're started we're about halfway through this more than halfway through this so we're we're getting there we're definitely getting there and you still have time but mm, the time is dwindling i guess okay uh cross ride for bunny beast tamer teal yeah yo, yo 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 this is like dead ass the coolest version of pale moon to have ever been created in v series which is probably purely because it's a clan collection card and clan collection is basically the second coming of christ for the v series format okay so this is a 13k one crit a cell twin drive oh so you just made it a 13k base I think it would be okay let me read this first well, actually let me take a sip first because my throat is killing me ah, sponsored by G fuel all right there uh, when this when placed on Vanguard circle or written by a card with the name Tealopse cost put four cards with bunny in their name from the drop to the bottom of the deck Search your deck for up to one grade two beast tamer called the rear, and that circle becomes Vanguard Circle Tender. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. This is um, this is a Legion effect. You put back four from the uh, drop to the deck, and then you call the beast tamer. Uh, I actually want to search up something, um, because it says four cards with bunny in their card name. Uh, I am going to very quickly check something. Let's see. Vanguard card list. Uh, I'm gonna keep this in the recording as well, so uh, prepare for the ride. V series. Where is Pale Moon? Pale Moon. There you are, Pale Moon. Uh, oh, we got Token Rambu. That's right. <laughs> I, I was checking just to see if we got anything new, and we actually did get something new. Uh, t -t 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 Pale Moon. We're gonna put Bun, as in like Bunny. Okay and trigger unit there are no bunny trigger units okay so you can't do that part of the legion which honestly not gonna lie i'm, I'm kind of saddened by i feel like you could have deserved that uh but that is interesting okay now back over here so you put back four of those normal units and then you search for one great shoe beast tamer which is probably going to be your uh i think her name is like clarina or corinthia something like that probably clarina uh and it becomes a vanguard circle and because clarina has a skill where if you have three or more bunnies in total from your rear garden soul it gets a drive that's a another twin drive so this is effectively a plus two auto on the vanguard circle once per turn this unit is attacked by a vanguard costs counter blast one move three cards with bunny or beast tamer in their name from rear to soul okay this is a pretty impact so if you're going against a feel control deck that's going to suck for you but if you're not going to get to feel control deck this is a great way to reset your soul uh this unit cannot be hit until the end of the battle all right this unit gains 10k if a card with clarina in its card name was sent to soul um wow just until end of uh i guess until end of turn because otherwise why would you need to get 10k if you're already nullifying the battle right uh wow that's impressively strong um holy crap dude that means it's a 23k base that's a v series mob can't like even do that effectively what the hell Ooh. Ooh. that's a little bit mm, that's a little bit much uh act of the vega circle once uh, per turn cost counter blast once soul charge one all of your front running is plus 3k at the start of the next main phase called bunny or beast tamer uh from drop to rear uh okay okay uh that that's kind of cool um let me see uh 
pretty sure common chain of birds on a single chain. It could be a cap. Uh, it's a disproportionate time, like I spent 30 minutes on one person. It feels like eventually it'll go overboard. It's a thread to show the intricacies of game mechanics. So the writer should IMO convey the point of the deck to the course without need of giving additional fluff or creating a hair drawback. Uh, granted, my goal is to make crossroads looking archetypes of dog crap v bosses. Hey, I think it's decent. Uh, the Tealops, I mean, he's not that bad. I have a foundation to work with. I, I kind of get his gripe because there are, I mean, this is, this is going to be a video that's an example that, uh, some, some of these are like really long because people are putting in like 12 cards and I'm having to review all of them, but you know what? That's why we just have to keep a slow and steady pace. And I think I, I want to give everyone the attention they deserve. And there's just some customs that come together as a complete package. So although I, th I think it's a downside, it's one that I, we, we want to bear with right because people should get their time to shine it's one of the things that makes this series so good is that everyone in the community gets to contribute and feel like they had their time in the spotlight uh okay so as for this i don't like this uh and here's the reason why right it's not because of like some busted car design it's disynergistic with the theme uh one thing this 13k uh this 13k base I feel like it shouldn't be that way. It should be a 12k base that gets a continuous power up like Spectral Duke Dragon does in V-Series. Because there is nothing here that prevents you from just writing this as your grade 3. So you can just right away be at this Tialapse as a 13k base. Uh, that's already breaking one of the fundamental balancing aspects of V-Series. Now, I am one to say that it was dumb that there were 12k bases in a 13k base format like V-Series. Uh, that felt like it was a needless depowering, or rather, I guess, a needless lifting up of the Force Clans. But even with that being bared in mind, we should still make this a 12k base that gets a 1k power up continuously. I mean, if, if, if Special Duke had to do it, you should do it too. Uh, another thing. This skill, right, is putting bunnies from the drop to the bottom of the deck at four at a time, but I don't think you get bunnies there very easily. Sure, you can garb with them, and I guess you discard with Tealopse, which is how you get the bunnies in there, but even so, it just doesn't feel like a condition that is thematically in tune with Tealopse, right? I think it would have been better if you put cards from like the drop and also the soul or something and that's how you did it like that might be better i don't know like how you would re reiterate this kind of condition right it feels like it's it's got something to it right like this this isn't some irrevocably bad uh, effect here it just feels like it's missing the point you know the drop zone recycling isn't something that paleman really focuses on and this deck probably shouldn't go in that direction it has its own defined gimmick to go into uh i, I do like though that you can search your deck for the for the chlorina and uh make it a vanguard circle automatically that that keeps in theme with it it does feel like a pretty elevated version of tealopsis effect which was a break even between um hand uh soul to the field like heck even the tealopsis skill right like it puts cards from like hand of the soul and then you spit out to the field so mm, that isn't getting to the drop either so it's really hard to accelerate that drop uh this this skill uh the 10k i feel is like kind of needless i do like this skill where you can put stuff back into the soul uh not just for safekeeping but also because it lets you do more pale moon shenanigans which is centralized on calling things from the soul but this 10k is a bit insult to injury but the first part of it i think is really nice uh and this third skill yeah totally fine uh you get to soul charge and then giving 3k to the front row it feels a lot like uh golden beast tamer also giving 3k to your front row units uh so it's totally in line and it stacks on top it, it, it comes in the place of the front row continuous buff that tealopsa gave because it gave uh, 1k for all of your bunny names this one's just a flat 3k but you do have the counter blast for it but it does get you a soul charge and building the soul is fairly important for your tealopsa because it keeps your bunny count increasing and it also gives you more options with what to call and what to make the vanguard and stuff like that so that's that's how it is um i don't know uh what i think i'm gonna rate this like a like a five out of ten it does attempt to be interesting and there are some things about it i like but overall it it misses the point of tia Lopse and some of the stuff like 
this is kind of a downgrade which i don't appreciate uh for it. it 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 goes against the scaling nature of the bunnies and this goes uh this searches the deck but it puts from drop to bottom and drop is not a zone that you associate with uh i think this is the only effect i like and even then this 10k bit is sort of soiling it so yeah like a four or five out of ten i'd say i'm sorry man uh, but i will take your uh suggestion into consideration over here because he does make a point truck significant so i thought it'd be cool if we got an encounter entirely focused on legion uh how much time we got uh let's see this is already when i no 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 we're, we're gonna keep going man I, I want to get to uh more people so i'm gonna do that uh hell yeah okay so i thought it'd be cool if we got an encounter entirely focused on legion but i don't know how to properly make an entire set of cards so i sell it on giving overload much needed power boost for standard so may i present you with the cross okay Let's do it, baby. More Overlord, all Overlord. You know what? I think that might just be influencing what I titled this episode. Overlords. Overlords everywhere. <laughs> so then, uh, this is Dragonic Overlord the Cross as an encounter card. Act on the Vanguard Circle once per fight. Ooh, really? Is this the once per fight that we see on Gotcha Redora? I think it is. Um, Legion 26. Dragonic over at the end. If your opponent's wow, we're actually gonna put Legion, just the actual Legion skill. That's crazy. Um, if your opponent's Vanguard is great three or greater, you return four cards without heal or uh over trigger from your drop zone of the deck once. Search for specified card in Legion. Ah, interesting. Okay, you can't stall out the game and you can't put back the over trigger, which means you can't abuse Legion in the same way that it was abused. Um for, for those of you who don't know, Legion had a very bad tempo with its games where games either ended wildly quick because legions were really big and hard to guard so you just got otk'd immediately or if you didn't get otk'd immediately legion games would drag on forever because they kept re-legioning back all their heal triggers and they would just constantly heal against each other and it felt like you would never go anywhere in a game uh heck vanguard zero i think in particular memed this aspect of uh, legion format fights so yeah i can see why you would just say you can put back triggers but it's going to be your more aggressive proactive triggers than the heal triggers that are just going to stall the game and make it boring and ot just goes without like saying why we don't let that go back in the deck um uh, 26 means that you're just putting a 13 with a 13 okay and you chose specifically to at the end which makes sense because that was how the cross was all right moving on auto on the vanguard circle was returned but this unit attacks cost uh counter blast one and discard one card uh so discard a card from the hand you know grammar uh choose one of your opponent's rear guards to retire and this unit gets 5k until end of turn really cool it's very reminiscent of how the cross did its original skill where uh although this one is a win attack skill rather than a uh if it doesn't hit because how that one worked is if it didn't hit you could like retire two of your rears this one is win attack you can uh cp and do a one for one exchange but it gets 5k until end of turn which means you're able to uh, have that 5k stack so that's totally fair you ha it's a pretty exorbitant cost for the retire but the retire is just an accessory to your to your true end goal which is um powering up your vanguard from the multi swings out on the vanguard circle once per turn at the end of all this unit attack cost energy blast four and discard a card stand this unit gets drive minus one and power plus ten thousand until end of turn Ooh, ooh, okay and this is going with the uh, vanguard skill right where the vanguard is able to restand so you're getting three attacks total um this one is discarding for a break even but you have to give for energy and with draconic over at the end let's assume that you uh yeah okay so yeah, this is kind of cracked um okay hmm here's what i'm gonna say about this it's treading the line but i think it's fine yeah it's probably fine here's the thing this skill technically doesn't require you to be in legion nor does this so you can just do this as your vanguard right and it's just a restand with uh with an extra 10k power right uh what, what, what you do is you just do both of these which means it's going to be swing twice for 28 on your first grade three turn now let's assume that you're going first that means it's going to be a pretty beefy attacker 
but that's all it does. It pings one rear and it does beefy attacking, but you need to discard two cards and counter blast one and energy blast four in order to do that. And you're only standing up with drive minus one, which means it is holistically a neg one to do these things, although you are retiring a rear guard, so maybe you could say it's a break even, but you're playing a lot of costs for that. That is a very fair effect, super fair. But once you get into your Legion, it feels like it switches because you get a really beefy attacker, which is 26, 26 plus 15, which is the uh, the numbers we're gonna have to go with here. 26 plus 15 is uh, 41, 41 being, so, let, let's just say that you don't have a booster, right? 41 is still demanding a 30K guard for each swing. That's pretty freaking hefty. Uh, on top of that, you're swinging three times because Dragonic Overlord at the end also has an effect to discard some cards and restand. But because Dragonic Overlord at the end is discarding uh, two cards, you would think, oh, okay. L let me let me look up something. I, I need to look up something about how, because I want to figure out the card economy with these discards. Because as we all know, Halb is uh, one of the centerpieces of the Overlord strategy. Okay, what's up, buddy? It's been a while since I've seen you because Overlord has really uh, gotten lost in the uh, annals of time, which for the uh, nostalgia haters, I think that's what they always wanted for Overlord in this format. Drag Raider Halb, uh, when this would be discarded. You, okay, so Vanguard and Overlord can be discarded as two. Uh, this and then when it's discarded uh for the cost of the overlord call it to the back row gets 5k to end of turn so you can keep uh you, you can keep doing helps you have the ability to help three times in a turn but you'd have to keep getting your helps and you can't really recur them back so that's fine but it does mean you're mitigating your costs by calling to the field and it's going to be a strong booster. Maybe you overcall to uh, give more boost. Let's say you boost uh, your Vanguard initially with something. And then when it does the restand skill off of the end, you can then call a Halb again. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty strong, man. Not going to lie. Uh, but I think it's fine because that's just a combo-reliant way of mitigating it. Uh, just typical Overlord stuff. But still, what, I, what I'm really trying to get at here is this guy is a 41. And let's say he wasn't boosted 30k shield but if he is boosted by let's say a halp which is a 13k that's going to get you up to 54. these are some really strong attacks now one thing i do i do like that keeps this someone in check guys it doesn't have a persona right so you're not going to have to worry about persona right bonuses and that's one of the things that i have to say that keeps this in check without persona right the only thing that's going to get super ridiculously big is your vanguard swings. Your rear guards are not a problem. You have to wait for your opponent's vanguard to be grade 3 or greater to even get the legion. And you can only legion once per fight with this. That's important as well. You can't keep cycling this over and over and over again. And it doesn't scale past the opponent being grade 3 or greater. So for all the power and the restance you're getting and all the costs you're doing and all the limitations and restrictions, I like this. This works. This is a good card. This is cool. I was hesitant at first. Don't get me wrong. Reading this and going through my thought process, I wanted to go under the conclusion of, yeah, it's probably a bit above the line, but there are ways to change it. But honestly, when you put everything together, the grand scheme is favorable it reflects kindly in the cross here i think this is fine it gives you the triple attack that people don't like about the cross but you have to wait you have to wait right you have to wait for the opponent's vanguard to be grade three greater with the amount of draw power that people get they could reasonably survive this now it might still be really freaking hard to guard and then on the next turn you can uh just do the three attacks again as long as you keep paying the cost for it but it is also killing your card advantage and overlord by nature doesn't get a lot of card advantage in it which is one very good thing that keeps this deck in check is yes it has a really high octane offense but it has a pretty bad defense afterwards so it's also vulnerable to counter attack much like a barbarian in D&D, when when you use reckless attack to be specific 
so yeah good card uh you also get igni bro dragon okay so we're taking it sort of like the v series way not just with the triple attack but also because this is a support that i believe was only available it, it was a v original support when this unit attacks if your vanguard is dragonic overload the cross you may have this unit gets 5k power um it doesn't specify until turn or end of battle but i suppose i mean you would have to specify that in case there's ever a card like that dragonic overlord card uh if there was ever a card that restood it then you would need to specify it but let's just say that for the sake of it it's just like a one-time instance of when attacks so like until end of battle uh on the rear circle when your vanguard with overlord's card name would attack soul blast 2 retire this unit uh draw a card and either counter charge one or energy charge two. Oh, okay so this is refunding one of your costs but you're having to make a major soul blast and it is a break even so you would swing with igni road first and then go into your uh, main vanguard attacks which means that igni road ideally is not a recipient of your triggers so you would probably go igni road vanguard swings all of it and then some other card on your other column in order to be the recipient of all your trigger effects if you're going that way and one thing to note is that you will always be uh doing drive checks with uh with this guy because uh you don't get the minus drives of the legion mate so the only minus drive that's going to count is the one from his restand which is an incentive to actually utilize the draconic overlord the end restand first and then do the restand of the cross but if you do the crosses first then you get the 10k power up so it's sort of like you're getting the pseudo guarantee of a trigger 10k but at the price of card advantage so that's another really interesting decision tree when deciding what order of effects that you take it I think this is a good card. Um, it's very diverse in the things that it affords you, and I'm not sure if it, Overlord should be able to gain back these resources, but you're just converting one resource. Uh, with, uh, Energy Blast 2 is pretty small, and Counter Charge 1 for Soul Blast 2 feels appropriate. You are breaking even, and the breaking even is fine because you're going to be discarding a lot of cards anyway, so really what this is doing is it's converting field to hand just so you can substantiate the discards required to even have your Vanguard hit the ground. Uh yeah that's a, this is a this is a fine card uh not only is it balanced but i think it touches all of the potential issues that overlord would come to so it's a very thoughtful card the restand supposed to be locked behind being legion state but it's late where i am so i'll fix it tomorrow uh okay so he never actually fixed it but the restand being locked behind legion so yeah that means even more this card just doesn't have like a terrible amount of early game uh but you would probably still ride it first right just so that you could have it available or would you actually just ride the original um dragonic overlord and then just have this guy go over it no no, no. you would ride the end and then have this guy leech at the end um oh hold on a second if there's a way to soul blast during the main phase what you do is you uh ride this over the end on um turn four well no 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 no. hold on a second because if you go second then you can immediately do it so you probably want to ride it oh that's so hard deciding which one you can ride but it's good that it's hard it's not like it was with the uh, phantom blaster stuff where stuff just don't doesn't like work together no no no, no. um it, in this or whether it was very complicated and convoluted and doesn't synergize perfectly no it these when i was talking about before how there's a difference between a deck that gives you decision trees and a deck that just doesn't synergize perfectly this is an example of the former these are decision trees where you're rewarded for picking one or the other and they have their own merits and drawbacks these are cool cards yeah these are really cool um okay how many cards do we got here uh oh those are a lot okay 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 um let me go ahead and keep it i think i should keep it at that right uh let's see did we go over a lot today uh, yeah i think we went over a fair bit we didn't get through a lot of users because you know the guy had a the guy had a point we didn't get a lot of uh we get a lot of cards per person um so we're not even though we're going over a lot of cards we're not actually progressing the list very much but if you look down here i think we actually made like a notable margin um because even though it is like not a lot of people being addressed they're we're still going down the post in total pretty okay so we're making a cumulative effort towards the end so i'm going to leave it here and we're going to pick up with a street explosion amazing name that uh we're gonna pick up with him next time when we come back i'm trying to get one of these out i'm probably gonna record on monday or something the weekends are very ex uh it's very hefty time because i work on the weekends for reference so it's gonna take a couple days to get one of those out there but i actually do have a 
video coming in the meantime to tide you guys over, which, while not custom card related, is still somewhat related to investigating cards and talking about effects and how things work together, which is, uh, okay, 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 let me just say it. I'm, I'm gonna be really, I'm gonna be releasing a, uh, retrospective video real quick, uh, from my boy David, so look forward to that. Anyway, uh, let me guys, let me know, you guys, I'm just mixing up on my words today, let me know what you guys thought of the video. Uh, which card effects you like, which ones you don't like. I was pretty satisfied with a lot of these, although there were some that I wasn't too keen on, particularly the Tia Lopse. Is this Overlord fine, or would you dread this ever coming to the format? Is this Tia Lopse secretly peak, but I just don't realize it because I'm a stupid poo-poo head? Uh, are effects like these fine and up with the power creep of the format? You know? you be to decide oh and uh would do you think unlucky is skill issue for the opponent <laughs> or is it just problematic card design let me know lots of stuff to discuss here uh pretty 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 fun episode all around so let me know all about that anyway if you did guys uh, if you guys did like this episode then go ahead and check out the uh other custom card reviews that i've done this season the playlist is growing ever so slowly but impactfully so go ahead and check those out if you want other vanguard content then maybe uh top tens discussions anime reactions fight nights i do loads of different kind of content so you won't be disappointed and if you like what you see consider leaving a subscribe and turn notification bell for the next time i upload a video and with that said take care god bless